the third edition of Dogus 30. Garbage hasn't been picked up for an ongoing two weeks in the capital city, and residents are outraged. The dispute has stirred serious controversy amongst citizens and city leaders. Here's Demarius with the first look. Good evening. I'm here at Cornerstone Church where residents met to discuss the city's garbage crisis. City leaders, including the mayor, city councilman, Kenny Stokes, and residents were all here unified to discuss the progress going forward. Garbage hasn't been picked up for an ongoing two weeks in the capital city, and residents are outraged. This dispute has stirred serious controversy among citizens and city leaders. Here, a city meeting was held and open to the public to provide information and details about the garbage crisis and updates on how improvements can be made. Residents was given the opportunity to voice their concerns and opinions. Jackson Mayor Chuck Lumumba gave a speech which addressed contract disputes which led to the garbage not being picked up. Find out what would our next move be uh, getting the garbage picked up. That's what we really thought this was all about, not to argue about uh, who had a position or who had a chance, but we know the city council had to vote on to get whoever the next be it be, but we got to bring somebody to the table. So uh, that's why we wanted to make sure that we have a good understanding of what's going on. We didn't come out to bring your folks out to agree with me or not to agree with me. We brought them out to tell the people when the camera, you go back and post your, to tell the people that we found out that we might get our job picked up uh, in three weeks or four weeks. But we still left the night not knowing when the people can expect their job to be picked up. And we had the mayor in the house, and we, that's what we were trying to pin him down, to give us some kind of reason when we could get out about it. That's why we hired him to be the mayor. And we listened to him as the mayor, then he go by the city council, and then bring it back to them, and they vote on who they're going to get to be it. This is Demaris Jones with Three on Your Side. Alcorn had its first ever fishing rodeo behind Complex D. Here's more of the story. I'm Joy Thornton, and I'm here at the Campus Fishing Rodeo behind Complex D. Let's see what's going on. Alcorn State University hosted its first annual fishing rodeo this past Wednesday. Any student with a gold card was able to attend. Fishing poles were available at the event, or students could bring their own. I am the Campus Union Coordinator here at Alcorn State. Tamia, she caught the first two fish of the day. Um, I've never fished before, actually. Hey, yeah, I've caught two, two little fish. It was pretty easy, it's chill. Uh, I was just encouraged by my boss to come out. I think the process is pretty easy. He explained you just push the button, cast it out. Tamia showed me how she casts her pole. The event was organized by campus union coordinator Balaos Malik. Uh, right now we're at the fishing rodeo on the campus lake. Uh, so far, uh, we've been in it for like an hour and a half so far. Okay. Yeah, this is our uh, first annual event that we're holding. Uh, it's that time of the year. Uh, uh, it's springtime, mating season, fish uh, spawning right now, so they're really biting. And we just wanted to give the students something uh, constructive. Student Jalen Brown caught one towards the end of the rodeo. From what I know, there's catfish, uh, bass, brim, uh, sockele, and there's carp also. We're, we're going to uh, award trophies to the person who caught the most fish and the person who uh, caught the biggest fish. This event gave students a chance to take a break from studying as finals week approaches, and it also encouraged them to get out and enjoy the nice spring weather. This was the first rodeo at Alcorn, but the campus union hopes to host more. This is Joy Thornton with Dogus 30. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned for more. When someone gets a COVID-19 vaccine, it tells their cells to pretend to look like COVID-19. And because their body thinks they're sick with COVID-19, their natural defenses start preparing antibodies to fight the virus. Even though they aren't sick and don't have the virus and won't attack their cells that are pretending. Now with their body prepared with antibodies, the real COVID-19 virus can't make them sick. So, 
get your vaccine when it becomes available, so your body is protected. A message from Cincinnati Children's. Mental health and learning disorders don't discriminate. 17 million children and adolescents in the United States live with disorders like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and dyslexia. Less than half get the help they need to thrive. Help the Child Mind Institute change these children's lives. Visit childmind.org. University students are housed into different dorms for their same pleasures. With so many students in one dorm, the university has hired resident assistants or RAs to help keep dorm life organized. These RAs are here to be first responders to students and to overall help dorm life be better. No matter what dorm you are assigned to as an RA here at Alcorn State University, the job is never easy. At the basis, a RA is the mother or the father of their dorm. They monitor their assigned floor slash building in order to keep students safe. They also act as a liaison between Alcorn staff and students since staff cannot always be with and monitor students 24-7. I spoke with Honors Third Floor Left Wing RA Deja Montgomery to learn more about other things she has to do with her position as an RA. Everyday duties include doing rounds in the hallways, making sure nobody's fighting or nobody's hurt, unpropping the side doors. We have this duty to, you know, monitor who comes in and out of the building, making sure everybody has their gold cards, making sure everybody has their mask on and everybody's just safe, really. And then we have phone duty, which is like, basically for a night or the weekend you're the manager of the whole building so if anything on campus happens then you will have they'll call you and you will have to go like deal with the situation i also talked with first time ra of robinson hall second floor jayla fogg about if she would recommend the job to anyone else to be mentally prepared as a student to be ra and i know a lot of people who weren't mentally prepared and you can tell, like, um, being a leader, basically, you have to be a leader to be a RA. And if you're not mentally prepared at this stage of college yet to be a RA, then no. But, of course, being an RA is very challenging. So I would, I actually would, because it's a growing experience that I think um, at one point in your college experience, you have to go through. So I would. On Wednesday, March 24th at 6 p.m., Resident Life hosted a resident assistant interest social for those who are interested in becoming RAs in the fall 2021 semester. The official application for the fall 2021 semester opens March 25th through April 9th. For Dogan 30, this is Morgan Bridgman. Alcorn Junior Joy Thornton was recently selected as an awardee for the National Geographic HBCU Scholarship. This is Charlie Bow, and this is Dogus 30. The video you are seeing right now is a video submission that Joy Thornton sent to the Committee of the National Geographic HBCU Scholarship. The National Geographic eMedia Scholarship is a competitive program aimed at giving students from historically black colleges and universities an opportunity to explore careers with the world's premier factual storytelling and media company. Available to freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, recipients will receive a monetary award of $10,000 and an opportunity to participate in a two-week immersion program at National Geographic Headquarters in Washington, D.C. Joy was recently selected as an awardee for the National Geographic HBCU Scholarship. 
I sat down with Joy and asked her about how she felt about this scholarship opportunity. Since Kids Not To Be Adopted is such an old and kind of respected organization, I feel like partnering with them will have a great impact on the rest of my life. Um, they do a lot of great storytelling and I feel like it's important for HCP students to contribute their perspective and the stories they tell are not really um, heard that much, so I feel like this will also get to amplify like other HCP students and other um, Mass Comm and journalism um, students. She expressed her excitement for this opportunity and the great things she can experience from receiving the scholarship money to visiting DC. I'm excited to be the first student at Alcorn to receive the Not To Be Adopted Media Scholarship for HCP students. I'm really excited to go to DC this summer and use the scholarship money for um, anything school related like um, getting gear, gas, um, groceries, stuff like that. Just stuff that I'll need and anything in the future. And I've never been to DC before so I'm excited to go this summer and I've already been talking to my mentor, um, Lauren Jackson, and she's been preparing me and getting me ready. Um, I know it's going to be a lot thrown at me at once but I'm beyond excited for the opportunity. I'm Charlie Bow and this has been Dogus 30. Brianna took a look at what the multicultural departments at Alcorn have to offer at their spring social. Let's see what fun foods and culture she got to explore. This is Brianna Stokes reporting to you for Dogus 30. On Thursday, April 13th at 3.30 p.m., the International and Multicultural Students Organization held a multicultural spring social. The event took place in the Office of Global Programs in Dr. Delvi Alepo, Maria Kevin Prout and Kalu Ben Masad held this event to teach students about the many different international backgrounds. During the event, they played music, participated in numerous activities, and sampled international foods. The ASU Office of Global Programs also supports international students who are studying at Alcorn State. Staff and faculty members also gave tips on how students can apply for study abroad opportunities here at Alcorn State University. That's something that we promote heavily here in the Office of Global Programs. Uh, to study abroad, uh, students need to come here and uh, they need to uh, speak with an advisor, a study abroad advisor, and uh, they can do that between the freshman year and the senior year, but uh, they cannot study abroad in the last semester of the senior year, and so it has to be done uh, before then. Uh, they'll, and they'll be gone for the whole semester. So we advise them uh, to make sure that they are taking classes that will come towards the degree. And so, yeah, this, this is another, uh, this event we hope will inspire some of our students to be able to study abroad. The international community here in Alcorn is quite small, so I think it's important for us to come together, as well as expose our fellow classmates and schoolmates, especially our American, um, companions about our culture you know because we push for diversity and inclusion and so I think it's very important that an event like this happens hopefully it can get back to the large scale I was told it used to be back in the day and so um, yeah we're just here to have a good time and share with everybody I got a chance to speak with Russian international student Maria and asked her how she feels to be on campus at Alcorn State University. I'm enjoying my time. So, of course, in the beginning, it was quite difficult to get used to the environment, to get used to different food, different culture. But I'm really happy and I'm grateful that I was placed here in Mississippi, in the south of the U.S., and especially the fact that I am working for HBCU, because it's a completely different thing for me, and I think if it hadn't been for Fulbright, if it hadn't been for this opportunity, I would have never been able to get exposed to a different culture, and I just love it. Khalud bin smith Sada, teacher of Arabic languages, had this to say about teaching Arabic at Alcorn's campus. You're completely different. So I try to focus on the similarities that we have and the heritage that we share being placed in an HBCU. So like whenever I tell people I'm from Africa, they're like, oh, you're from motherland. <laughs> <laughs> so I love to build that connection with them. So yeah, like getting to know students here and um, their like background and what they want to achieve and like helping them a little bit with whatever I could. That's why I was placed here, I suppose. <laughs> 
During the event, students got to hear the personal experience of international students who are studying at ASU and also faculty members who teach study abroad also spoke out on the many cultural differences and similarities. Alcorn State University welcomes all students from every background. So for more information on international student services and study abroad, you can visit the website on www.alcorn.edu. This is Brianna Stokes reporting to you for Dogus 30. We'll be right back after the break. steps to keep the people we love safe. But some health risks are easy to miss. Ticks hiding in the yard can spread germs that can cause Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Mice searching for sources of food can spread bacteria and disease. Mosquitoes breed in standing water and can transmit illnesses like West Nile virus and Zika virus. Cockroaches are drawn to water in the home and can leave behind allergens that trigger asthma attacks. Stinging insects attack in defense of their nests and send more than half a million people to the emergency room every year. Household pests are a threat to our health. Learn what you can do to protect your family at pestworld.org. Why would you bully me? Why would you bully me? Why would you bully me? Because it makes you feel cool? Because I'm different? Do I touch a nerve? Does making me feel bad make you feel good? Why? 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 Bullying hurts. Bullying abuses. Bullying kills. Why would you bully me? As an Olympic athlete, I prepare for everything. So when I became pregnant, I thought I was ready. But at 32 weeks, I was diagnosed with severe preeclampsia and had an emergency C-section. Looking back, had I known the warning signs, I would have talked to my doctor sooner. Too many women die of pregnancy-related complications, and most are preventable. If you or someone you know is pregnant or recently had a baby, learn the warning signs. It could help save her life. Hear her. Mental health and learning disorders don't discriminate. 17 million children and adolescents in the United States live with disorders like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and dyslexia. Less than half get the help they need to thrive. Help the Child Mind Institute change these children's lives. Visit childmind.org. Need a good book or a great place to study? Jalen has more on the bookstore and how it can benefit you as a student. Hello everyone, my name is Jalen Shamar Anderson, reporting here on Dogus 30, and I am standing inside of the awesome Alcorn State University campus bookstore, and I decided to take this time to do a story on why students should take the opportunity to come here, whether they need all their necessary needs, like books, book bags, shirts, hats, pens, papers, you know, and all the like. So stay tuned. Do you ever find yourself needing the right materials? Whether it's pens, pencils, book bags, any materials that you need? 
then the Alcorn State University Campus Store can provide you with all your necessary needs. The Campus Store or Bookstore can provide you with a variety of items, ranging from shirts, hats, jackets, new headphones, etc. Believe me, they have the whole nine yards. It's the best place to get uh, whatever the students need on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we even have a recharge stores where they can go and get their snacks, their coffee, um, anything that they pretty much need, and they can go come here and get what they need. And not just that, the campus store can also provide books that are required for some classes. So, if you ever need to check out a book, the campus store can definitely help you out in that process. But don't just take my word for it. One of the students wanted to share their insight on it. I've come here a bunch of times just looking to get essential stuff that I forgot when I moved in. Um, I've had everything I needed to get out of here. They've been good with getting us books too as far as athletes and getting us hooked up with stuff like that. And then um, getting just Alcorn gear if you want it, they got it here. So if you ever need materials or to just relax in the lounge area, Believe me, the campus store at the end of the day will turn you into a very satisfied customer. So, if you're ever in need of any good materials, be sure to stop by the campus bookstore. My name is Jalen Shamar Anson, and this has been Dogus 30. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned for more. When someone gets a COVID-19 vaccine, it tells their cells to pretend to look like COVID-19. And because their body thinks they're sick with COVID-19, their natural defenses start preparing antibodies to fight the virus, even though they aren't sick and don't have the virus and won't attack their cells that are pretending. Now with their body prepared with antibodies, the real COVID-19 virus can't make them sick. So get your vaccine when it becomes available so your body is protected. A message from Cincinnati Children's. Mental health and learning disorders don't discriminate. 17 million children and adolescents in the United States live with disorders like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and dyslexia. Less than half get the help they need to thrive. Help the Child Mind Institute change these children's lives. Visit childmind.org. Every day we take steps to keep the people we love safe, but some health risks are easy to miss. Ticks hiding in the yard can spread germs that can cause Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Mice searching for sources of food can spread bacteria and disease. Mosquitoes breed in standing water and can transmit illnesses like West Nile virus and Zika virus. Cockroaches are drawn to water in the home and can leave behind allergens that trigger asthma attacks. Stinging insects attack in defense of their nests and send more than half a million people to the emergency room every year. Household pests are a threat to our health. Learn what you can do to protect your family at pestworld.org. Media Day for the Mass Communications Department at Alcorn State University was underway. 
It was a day for the students to be praised for the work they've done and to learn from well-known figures in the journalism and media industry. Keith Honore of WLBT and George Daniels of the University of Alabama were in attendance to give quality advice to the students. Well, it was, it was a lot, you know. Um, I, th I think one of the panelists said, like, if, you know, if you have opportunity to, you know, you know, do something with your life and things like that, you know, with involving media, involving, um, you know, acting or, you know, any, any, any type of profession in general, it doesn't have to be pertaining to media. Media Day is basically our annual event where we uh, reward our students for working really hard from August until April. And it's basically, it gives awards away in um, broadcasting, print, uh, radio. And it also gives the kids a chance, we bring on panelists and professionals who are in the field and give the kids a chance to kind of uh, press the flesh with them, uh, try to get cards from them, uh, try to see if they can get internships, possibly jobs and it's hopefully it's advantageous for them. As communications department looks to produce more aspiring journalists for years to come. I'm Jack Butler reporting to you for Dogus 30. This concludes our segment. Thank you for watching Dogus 30.